morning. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'd like to, to welcome you to the uh, Health Services Committee. Uh, I'm pleased to be working with this committee again. I enjoyed the time that I spent with them before, so I'm looking forward to working with them again this year. First thing I need is a motion to approve the minutes of the last month's meeting. So I have Mr. McDevitt, Mr. Connor, or Ms. Hogan, and Mr. Stroud. If someone would like to make the motion. Uh, this is Peter. I'll be happy to make that motion, Edna. Thank you, Mr. McDevitt. A sec second to that? Uh, Mr. All right. Thank you, Mr. Conover. Any additions or corrections? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I'll, I'm going to abstain. Yes. I'm, I'm just going to abstain. I wasn't there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Rob, you're there. How are things going with you? Very good. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to working with you again this year, Rob. So I'm going to turn this over to you now. Yeah, same here. Um, so uh, first item on my agenda is a request to amend the 2021 Warren County budget in the amount of $194,559. This is additional 100% state aid from the New York State Office of Addiction Supports and Services. Um, this is funding that will go toward the Addiction Care Center of Albany, who is currently operating an 18 bed women's residence on Glenwood Avenue in Queensbury. All right, would someone like to make that motion? Supervisor Conover, second to that. Ms. Hogan. Ms. Hogan, all right. All right. Uh, any discussion? All, right. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Hearing. Okay, Rob? Okay, the only other item I had was I just wanted to provide an update on the uh, COVID-19 vaccinations. Um, we have uh, seven agencies operating serve congregate care services in our uh, counties. And um, during the first phase, uh, their residents and uh, staff were able to adequately access uh, appointment times uh, for, for those vaccinations. Uh, we have a few <coughs> agencies that still have some folks in that first phase that are eligible and still <clears throat> looking for the appointments. So we do keep forwarding out uh, information to them, but for the most part, I wanted to let folks know that for the most part, the agencies and the residents were able to, to access those appointments. Okay, good, I'm happy to hear that. All right, um, you have nothing else then, Rob? Um, just would like to thank uh, Janelle Jones and her staff. Um, she did offer also a, a weekend clinic uh, for those residents and uh, staff. And so some folks were able to access it um, through the county. She did uh, offer also a clinic that she a weekend up. clinic so, uh, thank you, for Janelle those and residents. And, uh, thank that's you. all. We all agree with that. Thank you, Rob. All right. Do, we don't have any referrals or pending items. Uh, privilege of the floor. Anyone on the committee or here? Ms. Braver? I'm not on the committee. No, I know that. Thank you. I know we're all trying to get up back organized here. Um, my question for Rob is where are we on the mental health services contracts that were being provided through the hospital? Sure, I can provide an update on that. Um, those services uh, did transition over to the Behavioral Health Services North um, in early November. And uh, they are have transitioned uh, those services out of the hospital now and uh, are providing those services uh, primarily out of a location uh, at um, off of Bay Road there. It's um, I'm drawing a blank on the address right now, but the uh, um, it's right off of Bay Road and Queensbury and they still operate uh, some satellite services in Washington County as well but that transition is going well. That's great. Are they able to provide uh, telehealth too? Uh, yes, they are providing both in-person and, and tele. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sharon. 
Well, you're welcome. Anyone else? Don, do we? Yes, oh, Mr. McGowan. Um, from uh, the Baywood, is that the name you're looking for? Robert? The, the no. no uh, All right. Don't worry about it. My apologies. I just can't think of the name of the, the road right now. It's uh, right where the daycare is. It sits off of Bay Road. It's off, off of that same uh, same road right off of Baywood. Off of Bay. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lehman, do we have anything? Good morning, Chairwoman Frazier. No public comment at this time. Okay, thank you very much. All right, if we have nothing else, then thank you very much, Rob. Have a nice week, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. You're welcome. I guess we'll move right on to public health. Janelle, I see that you're out there. It's nice to see you this morning. I'm happy to be working with you again this year, and um, look forward to it. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, so um, my first resolution request today is to reappoint the members of the Warren County Health Services Professional Advisory Committee for the year starting January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2021 per the list that was transmitted with the meeting agenda information. This committee must be appointed annually by board resolution per New York State Department of Health regulations. A copy of the membership will be available at the meeting and will be on file with the minutes. And the meetings are quarterly. I would like to make that motion. Supervisor Carroll, seconded by uh, Supervisor Hogan. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, the second resolution request is to reappoint members to the Local Early Intervention Coordinating Council for the same term, the year January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021, per the list transmitted with the agenda, also per New York State Department of Health regulations. This committee must be appointed by board resolution annually. The membership list was transmitted, and this committee meets semi-annually. Right, Strau, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Strau. Second to that. I'll second it. This is Peter. Thank you, Mr. McDevitt. Any discussion? All right, we'll vote on that then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, the third resolution request is to approve filling and request referral to the personnel committee to approve filling the vacant full-time registered professional nurse number six, grade 19 position. The base salary is 47523 This position became vacant on the 6th of this year. Due to a resignation, the position is needed by the department and is revenue generating. Okay. Would someone like to make the motion to approve that resolution? Supervisor Conover, seconded by Supervisor Strout. Any discussions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, resolution number four is to approve the filling and request referral to the personnel committee to the full-time senior account clerk number one, which is a grade seven position with an annual salary of $33,600, um, which will be vacant on the 22nd of this month due to an anticipated retirement. This position is vital for our agency regarding purchasing and procurement, ensuring payment and agency expenses and assisting with contracts and inventory. All right, thank you. Would someone like to make that motion to approve that? Supervisor Conover, seconded by? I'll Supervisor second it, Eddie. Peter. Uh, any discussion on that? Questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And now we'll move on to number five. All right, number five is kind of a follow-up to that. It's a request to amend the table of organization to create a temporary per diem senior account clerk grade seven step 25 position. 
um, the annual salary of 43536 and we're requesting that to be effective January 26th of 2021. This position is being created to help us cover duties until we are able to fill the position with a new hire. Um, the retiree is eligible and agreeable to continue working per diem until we're able to put somebody in place. This position is temporary and will be in place hopefully for less than six months. Health Services has funding available in our 2021 budget, which is in the Public Health Health Services part-time salary <laughs> hourly uh, line um, to help cover the anticipated expense. All right, thank you. Would someone like to make a motion? For that one, Supervisor Hogan, seconded by Supervisor Conover. Do we have any questions? All right, if not, then we'll vote on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carriage. Thank you. All right, and then another follow-up resolution regarding the same um, is resolution request number six to approve filling and referral to the personnel committee to fill that temporary per diem senior account clerk grade seven, step 25, prorated at 2093 per hour. Um, and the created position we're asking to be effective 126 of 2021. This position is in the 2021 approved budget um, and the authorization is needed to fill the position. And actually, I think I misspoke. It's not in the 2021 budget, but we're re we just requested it. All right, thank you. Uh, would someone like to make the motion to approve that? Supervisor no. Snow, seconded by Supervisor Conover. Any discussion? All right, we'll vote on it then. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, resolution eight. Um, the next mm -hmm. two are. The next two are kind of, oh, I'm sorry, resolution number seven, to extend a one-year, one-dollar lease agreement with Hudson Headwaters Health Network, which is specifically Warrensburg Health Center, um, which was authorized in resolution 109 of 2020 to provide space for public health WIC clinics. Um, we need to be able to extend this agreement to ensure this provision is in place for accessibility for our WIC participants when it's safe to hold in-person meetings. Right now, we're not doing that. However, as soon as it's safe, hopefully when people are vaccinated and we can get back to some normalcy, we need to have this provision in place. All right, thank you. I'd like to make that motion. I'll make that motion, John. Are you Strauss, second by Supervisor Conover. Any discussion? Any questions? All right, well, then we'll vote on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. thank you. All right, resolutions eight and nine are kind of to clear up an issue with our contracts. Um, resolution eight is to amend um, the resolution 270 of 2017 to reflect Dr. William Borges of Hudson Headwaters Health Network as medical director for public health and authorize the chair of the board of supervisors to submit approval requests letter to the state health department health commissioner um, this change is to reflect the current role that's in place. All right, someone would like to make a motion on that? Supervisor I'll, Hogan, seconded by Supervisor. I'll, I'll move it uh, and then second it. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Any discussion? Yeah. Supervisor can Hogan. We move, can we move eight and nine together? Uh, that's fine with me. Uh, as long as we've read over number nine so that we know. Well, just read that one over for us. Went to jail for number nine and we'll put that together with number eight. All right, thank you. To amend resolution 508 of 2017 to reflect Dr. Paul Bachman of Hudson Headwaters Network as medical director for our certified home health agency. And again, that's to reflect the current practice. All right, Mr. McDevitt, is that all right to put resolution eight and nine together so we second that motion? Yes, I would, yes. Okay, thank you very much. We'll vote on that then. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, opposed? Aye. Thank you, Carrie. All right, Janelle, we'll move on. Okay, request, um, resolution request number 10 is to request to amend the 2021 county budget with regard to the immunization action plan grant, grant the LHD support for flu and COVID-19 outreach funding. Um, Tom Driscoll will be available if there's any questions um, with regard to this request. Thank you. 
Basically what this is, is the grant we got in late 2020, but we have not spent a, a penny of it. It is to promote um, what we're doing right now, which is the COVID uh, immunizations and flu. So we want to transfer all the money that was approved in 20 and bring it over to 21 budget. Because of course, back in July, when we did the budget, we didn't know about this. All right, thank you, Tom. All right, someone would like to make that motion? I, I would move it to bed. Thank you, Mr. McDevitt. Made the motion, a second to that motion, Supervisor Conover. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Thank you. All right, resolution request number 11 is to request to amend the 2021 county budget for the balance remaining on the COVID-19 addition grant, which is the 4192 budget code. And Tundra still can explain if there's any questions. Again, this is a, uh, another grant we got from the state or a couple grants together. Uh, basically, I'm saying the 17,000 is the balance still left over in 20. I'd like to bring it to 21 because again, we have nothing budgeted for this code. And this is where we're putting um, the overtime that's needed to get through all of this with our with our current full-time staff. All right, thank you, Tom, for that explanation. All right, uh, would someone like to make that motion then? Supervisor Conover, seconded by Supervisor Stroud. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, opposed? Carried, thank you. All right. Request resolution number 12, um, request to amend our 2021 county budget for the COVID ComCare grant, which is the 4193 budget code. And Tan will kind of give you a quick explanation on that. Now this budget we did get, um, it was 260, over 261,000. I did put in the new grant 150,000, just trying to split it between the two years. What I'm moving here, the 37,000, is from last year again the balance bringing it over to 2021 and adding it to the 150 that we already have in the budget so that again that's where all our uh, per diem contact tracers that janelle's hired are all being paid out of this account all right thank you all right would someone like to make that motion i'll make that motion supervisor sprout seconded by supervisor seconded and all right. Um, any discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Karen, thank you. Edna, I, I did have a question, Edna. Um, yes, Mr. Conover, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. You would just excuse me. Ton, um, does this uh, revenue that's unexpended, how do you handle that with the treasurer that it doesn't fall to the fund balance? Is it that it, we haven't received it yet? How exactly is that handled? Well, once we once we um, incur the in expenses, I can budget the state for this grant. So I haven't budgeted yet. It, it really kicked in more um, like mid-summer. Um, we did try to transfer in the last meeting over because we were using another grant. But once we got this grant, which I don't think we were told about this till like September, we had to go back, but um, once we've been putting all the expenses there for this, this is strictly for contact tracing. So it's been all the per diem nurses, a little bit. Um, we had to get cell phones for um, them for GPS when they need to bring stuff to patients' homes. And then the only other thing is a little PPE that we can put into this grant. It's primarily fringe and salary for these per diem contact tracers. So I will have to put all that together and submit that as a voucher to the state. I see. Have all that for 2020 expenses done. And then of course, going forward, this is now gonna be 21. This is a two year grant. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, resolution request number 13 is to request to transfer funds in the 2020 budget. Um, and Tan can explain that one as well. Um, this is again our, our, our second grant we got, 4192 is the GL code, and basically when you look at where we stand when it came to overtime, you know, you only know what you're going to do for budget. I was actually over in overtime salaries and under in part-time salaries, so I'm just transferring funds to cover uh, from part-time salary over to overtime salary to make that for the 2020, and I want to emphasize it's the 20, uh, actual expenses. Also, we paid for the trailer that we're doing our COVID testing out of there 
so our rent expense in that um, code was negative a little bit by 500 and also we have phone expense um, uh, the answering service uh, <laughs> which has been extremely high a lot more than what we expected with everything going on and again negative numbers but luckily I have the extra funds we did not go over budget um, to transfer over so I'm just trying to move that for 2020 uh, and emphasize that so that you know there's no negative numbers at the end of the year Thank you, Todd. Uh, would someone like to make the motion to approve that, please? Supervisor. I Connor. would make the motion. End of Seconded by Peter McDevitt. Uh, any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, moving along to information for discussion and review, I'll turn the floor over to uh, Todd to discuss attachment 14 and 15. Okay, attachment 14 is our financials, um, again, for December. It, of course, the year isn't closed yet, but this gave us some numbers to, to look at for now. Um, one thing I know that, that pops out is the fact that our revenues for 2020 are very low, but I want to emphasize what still needs to come in. So one of the big things is our preschool program. We have been told by the state February 1st they will finally release the uh, number two that we could have billed back in June. And that's over $842,000 that we're going to be able to build the state. Also, we have current bills that we can pay, um, that we'll be paying from September to December for like uh, process and other preschool. Again, those, anything that's 2020, those are going to come up around uh, March and April, let's hope. I believe they said they're going to release that. So I'm looking at, we will probably be able to bill over a million dollars just in the preschool program, finally. Um, I also want to emphasize the WIC program. Even though they're working from home, they're still doing clinics, they're still getting food vouchers to clients. So um, what we do is once we get all those numbers from the state, again, the federal and the state totals, we have to book that revenue along with the expense that's equal to that revenue, but we do record that. I'm estimating about 500000 It could be more. It could be less. I don't know where the food, stand, where the food vouchers stand, but there's another half a million there. Um, also, our home care, we're in the process of closing December this week. I expect that to be another 200000 or so. And then, of course, grants that I still have to bill, which, um, like we just talked about, the COVID grants and all our last quarterly grants, I'm expecting that to be about another 100000 So I'm looking at possibly another $2 million we're going to be putting on that revenue line by the time we close December or 2020. So I just want you to understand that, that that revenue looks low, but it's because a lot of this stuff doesn't kick in until like February and March before we can bill, but we book it in 2020. I did want to know at the bottom our salaries. This, um, I believe all salaries were posted, and this is <clears throat> excuse me, final. You'll see we're 83.79% in the salary line for um, year-to-date of the budget. We're... Um, 2.8 million is our total salaries. Um, also wanted to emphasize that our overtime of um, where is it? Overtime salaries of 47, almost $48,000 or 30.8 percent, 86 percent are strictly related to COVID-19. Obviously, our employees are going above and beyond their normal day to get all of this done, and um, so I just want to emphasize that. You know, even though the overtime salaries are over, it's, it's a lot of it, obviously, is due to the COVID-19. Um, the next one is attachment 15. That is our comparison again. Again, it's not finalized, obviously, but it gives you an idea of where we stand um, compared to last year, even though last year is final. But, again, you'll see that, obviously, the revenues is what stands out. And, again, I'm saying that we probably will be getting close to $2 million more we can book in revenues. That's on. Mm -hmm. my, my apologies uh, for the interruption. The, the, uh, if we're going to potentially add an additional $2 million in revenue to this uh, $4.2 million. What about on the expense side? Is there, how much more has to go into the expense side? <clears throat> I'm, hey, Ryan, we were unable to hear that. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my question was in reference to the two, 2 million additional potential to go in for revenue. Um, yep. 
how close is the expense side to being finished? What what more do you anticipate as to go into there, if anything? You know, most of the expenses are in. The only one that I know, um, well, we will see, like I said, we've got some of the 2020 that's probably about 400000 in expense for there. And we do have um, the WIC program, is a, even if it's 500000 revenue, it's 500000 expense. When uh, Rob books it, it's, it's even. So it, it could be... It could be another, um, you know, close to a million dollars there. Regarding all the grants and regarding um, uh, payrolls already posted in our home care, that's mainly payroll with that. Most of those expenses are already in. There aren't any big expenses except for the WIC program and the, the few expenses that we got to pay for preschool. And we bill that at 59.5% for the state. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are you, are you done? I'm done. All right, so uh, the next two attachments, 16 and 16A, are our status of referrals. Um, if you notice, from November of 2019 to November of 2020, uh, we actually were up, so that's good. Um, seems like things have been happening in our home care, and um, the numbers certainly are reflective of that. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to entertain that, or I can move along. Any questions? I guess we're good. We have our emergency preparedness, uh, emergency preparedness activity sheet um, that reflects a lot of our activities. Seems like it doesn't reflect all, but you know Dan's doing his best to keep that up to date. And um, we're still um, following up on animal bites, so we have our rabies um, rabies report attached. Um, at this time, we don't have any rabies clinics scheduled, um, but we did hold six of them last year. Um, we uh, did some rabies post-exposure treatments, and our total bites were 218 for the year. I don't have any meeting authorizations that I'm requesting. Um, so... Would you like me to go on to my COVID report? We don't have any uh, referrals or pending items, so yes, uh, let's just move right on to your COVID report. We appreciate that. I, I didn't hear. Can I go on with the COVID? Oh. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yes, we appreciate hearing about that. And then I have a question for you afterward when you're finished with your report. Okay, so to date for COVID, uh, we have 1,980 um, cases, and 182 of those have been in nursing homes and assisted livings at 13. Our community cases are 1,653, and the really hard number as well to report is the schools. It's 132. Those case investigations are very labor-intensive. However, they're made easier with very diligent um, schools um, and helping us being very cooperative in those um, investigations. Currently, we have 14 hospitalizations, deaths 49. Um, we've had a lot of deaths recently, which has been very sad. Um, our thoughts still go out to these families that have paid the ultimate sacrifice um, through this COVID pandemic. Um, our mandatory quarantines, currently we have 746. Um, to date, we've had 5,149. That's a lot of phone calls and follow-up. Um, with our precautionaries, um, we have five that are current. 857 have been completed, giving us 862 to date. Um, with travel, we have 40 current. Um, to date, we've had 2,393 quarantines that we followed through travel. Um, of those, we've had 3,423 referrals. Now, as I've explained previously, um, we might get a referral, but maybe when we follow up, that person, you know, the dates were wrong or there was a data glitch or something, and that person's already back wherever they were. Um, so... Of the 3,423 3, referrals, 2,393 were actually ours and in Warren County when we got the information. 
Um, testing to date, we've done 4,109 tests since April 9th. Um, our clinic continues Monday through Friday, 9 to 11, with the exception of holidays, of course, and weekends. 58% um, of the participation has been Warren County recently. Um, of all the 4,109 tests, 131 of those have been Warren County residents. 129 have been other counties with a 6% positivity rate that we've seen at our clinic. Um, with regard to vaccination, which is what I'm sure everybody's really wanting to hear about, um, Warren County agreed to participate as a provider in New York State's COVID-19 vaccination plan, which basically means that um, with hospitals, with federally qualified health centers, with public health, with pharmacies across the state, we've all agreed to be providers and to follow the New York State COVID vaccination plan. So when we receive vaccine, we vaccinate who we're asked to vaccinate um, because the state is the plan writer and they're trying to ensure vaccination to the whole community across the state. And we are requested to vaccinate a piece of that puzzle to make the whole, to make New York State whole. Um, it's a very rapidly evolving plan and we're trying to be very patient. We're asking the community to be patient too. Um, no one more than me wants to see 100% of Warren County vaccinated as soon as possible. We're ready to help in any way to make this happen. For right now, the public is being directed to go to the New York Am I Eligible to register for the state clinics. That's N-Y-A-M-I-E-L-I-G-I-B-L-E. -I and if you get to that site, you're able to register. We recognize that the New York State registration process has been a very bumpy road. Please know and be assured that New York State, our regional partners, local partners are working diligently on the issue on a daily basis. Warren County's Office of the Aging has really stepped up to the plate. They're helping our Warren County seniors that need assistance. Um, to date, Warren County's received 750 doses. 500 of those were directly from the state. The remaining of those have been from um, the federally qualified health center, Hudson Headwaters, that when we were vaccinating the 1A population, they assisted with those doses. At this time, we have zero doses. Um, we're asking people to stay up to date by monitoring the New York State website, the media, our county website, our county Facebook. We developed a phone line um, that's a recording that will update as necessary. Uh, that phone number is 518-761-6200. All of those sites are updated simultaneously, so we're asking people to follow whichever site or whichever means is the easiest for them. Um, our current plan right now, and again, this is a New York State plan is that pharmacies are going to be helping with our seniors, which means they'll be receiving doses directly to help vaccinate the 65 and older population. Um, the local health departments have been tasked at this time for helping to vaccinate the essential workers, um, which we have been working with our schools. We've been working with law enforcement and the other um, agencies, fire, um, and the other people on the list. It's a very prescriptive list of who we can vaccinate when we get vaccine. For right now, I want to thank everybody for their continued patience um, while we work together to vaccinate 100% of our county. And that's what I have for COVID. Um, I didn't know if there were any questions. No, my question had to do with that, am I eligible? Because I did go on that site, but it's interesting where they tell you you can get the vaccinations. Like it said, you could go to SUNY and Albany, you could go to the Plattsburgh Air Force Base in Plattsburgh. And yet then I heard discussion yesterday where someone was saying, why should someone in Binghamton be told they need to come to Albany for the vaccine when someone in Albany is being told they need to go to Plattsburgh? So I guess that means they haven't kind of got all the kids out yet. So while I can't speak for the state, um, my understanding through my regional calls is that the state's trying to address the problem of mass vaccination by bringing in the National Guard and helping develop vaccination sites, these massive sites to help groups of people. Um, while we think there might be more that pop up um, 
right now, those are the ones that have been stood up. So they're trying to divert the population to the clinics that have already been set up. All right, thank you. Does anyone on the committee <clears throat> have a question for Janelle regarding this? Madam Chairman? Mr. Conover, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, Janelle, thank you so much for your help this weekend. We had a situation, a COVID situation with the business here in Bolton. And uh, the response from the, the owner of the business uh, was uh, that uh, you were a professional and most helpful. And he was most impressed. And um, I just thought I'd pass that along. And really, that's been uh, our experience uh, throughout the, the past almost year now. Uh, from the county administrator to you all the way across the board with the whole staff. Um, you know, you, you, you've been just excellent um, in this uh, entire process. You've been good communicators and kudos to uh, you and your department and the county administrator for standing up that phone line and the other and, and being uh, uh, as clear as you could be uh, with the public regarding uh, the, uh, um, the fact that uh, we're waiting for doses. I think that helped, uh, helped settle the situation. Not entirely, of course, but I think it did help to settle the situation. And um, so uh, uh, keep up the good work, really. Uh, you're doing a terrific job. Thank you, Ron. And Janelle, I think we all feel the same way. We know that you people have worked tirelessly for the last few months, and we certainly do appreciate that. All right, if there are no other questions, then we'll move on to your electronic medical record report. All right, is Tammy on the call? Yes, yes she is. Mm -hmm. Tammy, do you want to kind of give the update here, or do you want me to take a stab at it? I have to move to the microphone. Can you hear me? So, um, Janelle asked that I work with Jody Bryan and the county attorney's office, and that's what we're currently doing. Right now, um, as a result of the survey, there are a couple of things that the current vendor believes they can help health services with. So, we're working on seeing what the best path forward. I know it's short but sweet, but there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else, Janelle? That we can transfer patients. Um, I was asked about our high takes hospice contract. This is just kind of for a quick discussion item. Okay. And we do have a current contract with high peaks hospice, and that's just literally so that we're able to transfer patients that need to be transferred to that program. Is that correct? There's there's no money associated with that contract. All right, did any committee members have any question regarding that? Are we good? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, thank you. I brought that up because over the weekend I was asked to sign a contract that was dated on a resolution from 1999. I felt like given the couple decades of time, you know, that, that has gone by regarding that contract that some of the um, information could be updated. And I wondered if perhaps this was an opportunity to have our county attorney's office just take a look at that resolu resolution and, um, you know, reflect it with the, what we're trying to accomplish in that contract. If that would be uh, all right with you, Supervisor Frazier. No, that's fine. Um, Janelle, do you have anything else to say? I mean, apparently the contract hasn't changed over the years, correct? Right. Um, the one that I was looking at was um, an agreement that we signed in July of 2009. Um, so still relatively dated, so um, we can definitely take another look at it. But in reality, it's just being able to transfer patients that maybe we're not able to deal with end-of-life needs. Um, because there's extra services through hospice, like, um, you know, ministering to their spiritual needs, um, being able to provide respite to families. There, there's a lot of, if it's more than just nursing, um, and some families choose to keep public health, but, you know, sometimes if the needs are more than what home care can provide, hospice provides an extension of services. So this was just in place to be able to allow us to transfer patients if needed. 
uh, excuse me, Supervisor Braver. Thanks. Um, I, Chairman Seaver did send me a copy of the contract, and I was looking it over as well as the attachment that goes with it from the resolution from 1999, and it is authorizing an agreement between the county and Glens Falls Hospital. This, as my understanding is the current contract is not with Glens Falls Hospital, so I think it would be appropriate, um, subject to the county attorney's um, position, to have a new resolution now coming out that says we will contract with a hospice for these services rather than um, through Glens Falls Hospital. I think, I think an updated resolution coming out of the board would be appropriate so that the chairwoman feels comfortable signing a new contract. Right. You know, okay, is there one that's been since 855 of 2010 with High Peaks Hospice? That's what I was going to ask because you had mentioned July of 09, so it means we have done something since 1999 then, correct? Right, 855 of 2010 is the resolution. Right. How does that resolution read, you know? I mean, just to read the whole uh, whereas the Director of Public Health and Patient Services advises new statutory and regulatory requirements relating to Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, a federal state health care program provider compliance has become effective, request approval for the county to execute amendment agreements with various Warren County health department contractors and business associates which reflect the terms relating to the new requirements. And whereas the Director of Public Health and Patient Services further advises the additional requirements will be forthcoming and therefore is requesting that no further resolution be required for execution of future amendment agreements with various department contractors and business associates relating to new updated requirements for HIPAA and federal state health care program provider compliance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors be and hereby is authorized to execute amendment agreements and various department contractors and business associates with regard to new and updated HIPAA federal state health care program provider compliance requirements in a form approved by the county attorney and be it further resolved the chairman of the board of supervisors be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all future amendment agreements with various department contractors and business associates with regard to newly implemented HIPAA federal state Health care program provider compliance requirements in the form approved by the county attorney. All right, if we need to make changes, then Janelle, I guess I'm going to leave it for you to work with Mary and come up with what, if there need to be changes made, then you'll work with her to take care of that. All right, thank you. And Mr. York, I understand that um, you wish to make a comment. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairwoman Frazier. I just wanted to follow up on the previous uh, question about the uh, relocation of the um, outpatient mental health and substance abuse services that were being provided by Glens Falls Hospital. That transition did happen to an agency called Behavioral Health Services North. Um, they have in, uh, opened what they call the Center for Wellbeing at 25 Willowbrook Road in Queensbury and they have located the adult outpatient services in that building uh, for both mental health and um, addiction services, and also their children and youth uh, mental health services. So they've combined all of those services in one location at 25 Willowbrook Road, and I just couldn't recall the address earlier. All right, thank you, Rob, for bringing us up to date on that. Um, Janelle, you. did you have anything else to bring forward? Are you good on everything? I muted myself. I'm good. Thank okay. you. And thank you, everybody, for your patience with all my resolutions today. Sorry. Thank you very much, Janelle. Uh, Mr. Lehman, do we have anything um, that you would need to bring to our attention? Uh, no public comment at this time, Chairwoman Frazier. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse me, Chairwoman Frazier, before you go to close the meeting, I'm sure it's difficult, but I'm down here at the end of the room. So yeah, would you I mind see you on the thing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know we got to get that Zoom all up and running so everybody can see each other. Uh, it, may I ask the question, please? Yes. Thank you, Chairwoman Frazier. My concern is that when I was asked to sign that contract, and of course it's an important contract, 
and I think all of us would agree that it's an essential service to our county. Um, I am also only as good as the information that is put in front of me. And so the only attachment that I had was a 1999 resolution. I certainly appreciate the information that Director Jones provided today, but I think it does highlight the need for us to have a little bit of time in between a meeting and questions that arise so that we can do that background homework. I did get a resolution, again, only that 1999. And I know that County Attorney Kassane and I spoke this morning, she's going to start going through old uh, resolutions to look and see what needs to be updated. But that was the only resolution attached to the contract. And as Director Jones indicated, perhaps we need to look at it even further because it is from 2009. So I appreciate the time that will be spent updating that. And I hope that you can review it for the next meeting. County Administrator Moore. Go ahead, yes. Uh, I just I just wanted to clarify just, just to make sure that the contract we're talking about that's pending execution is that for these services that Janelle mentioned or are we are we talking about two different things? I, I, yes, go ahead. I believe the contract is for the hospice services and the resolution from 1999 says, you know, has the whereas is in the resolved and talks about acceptance of patients. Um, into the hospice program and what Janelle read off from 2010 doesn't sound like that at all. It had to do with amending contracts to deal with HIPAA issues. So I still feel like we need a new resolution to authorize an agreement with hospice to do what we're already doing, just bring it up to date. What I'm questioning is whether whether we're talking about two separate issues here. I don't know what is in the contract that's pending execution and whether it's the same issue as as the the resolution that Janelle researched. I just don't know. I mean, it, it's throwing me why Glens Falls Hospital is in the mix. Mary? Yes. Um, I just received the email this morning. I'm going to look into it. I have a suspicion we're talking about two different contracts, but I don't know that to be the case. So if I can just have some time, I will clarify all of these issues for everyone. Thank you. We'll appreciate that, Mary. Anything else, Ms. Seaver? No. Uh, Supervisor Frazier, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else have anything they wish to bring to the floor? If not, then I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Supervisor Conover, seconded by Supervisor Hogan. All those in favor? Aye. And thank you very much, Janelle, again. We do appreciate all the work that you and your staff do for us. Have a good week.